Oracle is a $230 billion company with a forever free plan for the virtual private server, allowing pretty much anyone to use their servers to host websites for $0 a month. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to set everything up. Server set up. First, navigate to the link in the description and click on the start for free button. Here, you will need to fill out some information about yourself and you need to be accurate. It is a quick email and, and the credit card verification shouldn't be too much of a problem. Keep in mind that your card won't even be charged apart from the initial $1 that you get back immediately. Once approved, here is your control panel. As you can see here, it does say that I'm on the free tier and I won't be charged unless I click the upgrade button myself to get started. Click on create your virtual machine. You can name it whatever you want. Now next to image and shape, click on edit, then change image. For this tutorial, I will be using canonical Ubuntu 22. So switch to that and for the shape, use Ampere. This will allow you to get the maximum possible resources. So uh, go ahead and select 4 cores and 24 gigabytes of RAM. Then click on select shape. You will also want to save your private key and public key for later by clicking here. Now click create and you will get some IP addresses assigned automatically. So we'll have to create again. Your virtual private server will now be created automatically. While it says provisioning, that means it is still being met. After some time, it will turn green and see running. That means everything is working fine now. But at the point, we only have an IP address to work with, so we'll need to attach a domain name for it to look better. And for us to have an easier time controlling our website, we'll do this using a domain name system to point to a new record to this IP address. To do that, visit the provider where you purchased your domain name, mine is Hostinger, and I will be creating a free subdomain. It is going to be the page from where I will control my server. You don't have to use subdomains, but I just use subdomains because these are they are free. Next, navigate to the audience area of your provider and look up the subdomains you have just created. Change the records to use the IP address of your free Oracle server, which you can find it right here. Setting up control panel now. It will also need a way to communicate with our server. There is no user interface. So we will have to use an SSD connection to get started. Download the software from the link below. We will use Putty to talk and issue Codemaster virtual machine. So once installed, you should have two programs on your PC called Putty Gin and Putty Open. Both of them. And remember those keys we downloaded when we were creating our virtual machine? Yeah, we will use those keys now to authenticate and prove that is it is indeed us. The admin that is trying to connect to the server in Putty Gym. Click on conversion, then import key and navigate to the folder where you have saved your private and public key. Look for a file that ends with the key, just like this. Then open it. This will convert the key into a format that Putty can understand. So click save private key and save it under a different name. You can now close by we won't need it for the rest of this tutorial. Okay, so it's time to connect to our server using Putty. Inside your Oracle control panel, you will see your IP address and username. Pass your IP address into Putty. Also give this connection a name. It can be wherever you want and save it so we could reuse it later without having to do all of the steps again. Next, and navigate to credentials. Here you will want to upload the private key file you saved from Putty Gene. And finally, go back to sessions and before your IP address, type in Ubuntu ads. Click open and accept this black window. Great! This means we have made a connection to our virtual machine and we can start installing stuff on it. Type in sudo su dash, press enter, and then pass in the code to download the required software. You can pass it just by right clicking and press enter to execute all the comments. Keep in mind that they will have all of these comments in the description of this video. So don't worry, you don't have to type in it by all hand. Just let the installation finish until you see this purple screen. Then simply press enter and enter again to issue all of the needed updates. Now run another 
coat. Pass it and wait for the installation to finish. Keep in mind it can take like 5, 10 or 15 minutes to complete. And while everything is installing, we can use that time to open up some ports that will be necessary to connect to our control dashboard and the website to do that. Go back to your Oracle panel and click on the virtual cloud network test. Then the subnet and the default security list. Click add increase rules and type in this value and here 80 on port. This will open up FTP connections. So we'll use it. So we'll name it each type. Let's add another rule for HTTP. It is also this 0.0.0 slash .0, 0. When it's taken care of, you will also need a port for the control panel with the port of 82.44.3. And finally, let's add the FTP port which are 20 and 21. Then a range of another ports that you can see on the video. So just copy what I'm doing right now. And finally, at this point, our installation should be finished and you should see the screen. Type in uh, the reboot for the changes to take effect. And you can just click on OK even if you see this error. Now copy this address together and with the port just by selecting it and passing it into a new tab to connect to your control panel. If everything runs right, you should see an SSL warning. This is completely normal. Just click advanced and proceed here. You will be able to create your admin account for the cloud panel. So fill that out and log in uh, you into your panel pocket. I promise from here on out, it's going to get much easier. No more working with commands, just a good old interface. Let's start by adding a domain name to this dashboard so I don't have to use the IP address to connect every single time. Click on admin, then settings and type in the domain you want to use. I have used the subdomains I have created earlier. Type it. After saving it, you can use this domain name to access your control panel. It is much easier to remember than just a random IP address. So now in order to install uh, WordPress onto our website, click on add site and create a WordPress site. Type in the website name that you want. Again, I will use one of the subdomains. The installation is really fast. You will get this, docu this text document with all the, your login info. You can save it if you wish. Just make sure to not keep it like your, in your desktop or something very accessible. Now click on manage next to your site and we will change some settings around. Update up to 8.2 for PHP as well as max file size and the max here uh, to up to five, 512 megabytes as well. Then click on the SSL slash DLS tab to add a free SSL certificate to your domain by selecting the new Let's Encrypt Certificates book. At this point, you can reach your WordPress website as usual, just type in your domain name followed by slash WP admin and use the login credentials that you have to create it while installing WordPress. And now you can manage your website or your WordPress website however you want. So this is guys, all the links used will be in the description box. Click the like button, subscribe notifications on and share this video with your friends. Peace out.